Hi guys, it's Anne. Welcome to the channel. If you're new here, my channel is all about worm farming. Um, and you can use these methods that I use to both grow worms for your own use, like fishing or feeding to your reptiles or what have you. Or you can also use it to harvest castings, which um, is what I do. Uh, I harvest them to feed the castings to my bonsais and my ornamental as well as my edible plants. So today we are looking in on my experimental worm bin, the no grit bin. Now this bin was started 137 days ago. Last time we looked in on it was 34 days ago. So let's have a look in here and see how it is going. Uh, the principle behind this bin is that I am not using any eggshell, oyster shell, or rock dust in here to help the worms digest their food. My theory is that they will find hard bits in the food itself to be able to use it. Now granted, in my other bins I do use grit, so I'm not suggesting that this is a way of life that you should do this for all of your bins. I'm simply showing you that if you forget the grit or if you started out not using grit, you're not killing your worms. And as far as I can tell now, in 134 days, the worms are eating just fine and reproducing just fine. And they are all still very happy. So it's been about a month since I looked in on this. Um, I did give a lot of the bins water when I came back from vacation, but I have not fed them. So you can look and see that there is a little cocoon here very tiny cocoon, probably from a very tiny worm, probably a blue worm. What we have here is a regular um, bus box, and it holds about a pound of my Uncle Jim's mix, which is a mix of red wigglers, blue worms, and European night crawlers. So, you know, put your, you know, your comments below. How do you think this bin is working with no added grit? Um, I did run this experiment last year, and it did just fine, but I used leaves, and some people had theorized that, you know, maybe there was some, you know, grit or something from dirt in with the, um, the leaves. So this year we did it only with my paper bedding, but with no grit added. So I'm looking here and I'm seeing all ages of worms. Um, I'm seeing little tiny worms, I'm seeing adult worms. So they all appear to be doing just fine. So this side is definitely more finished than the other side. All right. So back in the beginning when we did this bin, we did have some pineapple. So we'll see if the pineapple is still in here. And uh, last time it just got bananas and uh, just regular old kitchen scraps. So I'm gonna move over the dry stuff here because I think I fed on this side. And let's see, see if we find anything. We had that uh, pineapple in here at 134 days and it was still in here, it was crazy. Pineapple is a super, super slow food. Um, avocado pit, also super slow food. I've got a mango pit and uh, looks like they've eaten everything out of it. All that's left is the shell. And I don't know. Well, I don't know if we're gonna find any of my kitchen scraps from last time at all. Um, we did give them a pretty healthy feeding because I knew I was going on vacation. But uh, 30 days is even a bit to expect, even from this small of a bin and this few of worms. All right, so we're not we're not finding anything except for the super slow food here. So I'm just gonna incorporate everything back in together, make the bin homogenous, and then we'll feed them up. I don't think we're anywhere near ready to harvest here, so um, I think it's fine that we put everything back together. All right, so everybody's doing fine here. Um, I'm gonna give them a little bit of shredded paper here to try and increase the bulk of the bin. Okay, I think I added coconut coir last time, so I think it'll be fine to just add paper this time. And what they're going to get is uh, kind of some goo. 
This is left over from when Cece moved, and so this is a combination of pasta that I've pre-wetted, um, pasta and some grain and some nuts. And I'm gonna put that over here. And now that I'm looking at it, I'm thinking maybe it needs a little bit more water. So let me get them some water. So yeah, this is just regular tap water that's been resting um, for a minimum of a couple of days to just let the, uh, the chlorines and such evaporate out of the water so that it's safe for the worms. So I'm going to add probably about, I don't know, this holds, I don't know how many fluid ounces, but probably a cup, like a water glass full, I think is what I'm going for here to make sure that this is all the paper is wet and that pasta is a little sticky. So I'm afraid that it would soak the moisture right out of everything. So I'm gonna cover these guys up. We have one more experiment to go. We're going to do our worm chow only bin where I'm bulking up my worms. So hang on and let me switch out the bins. If you're liking this video, give it a muddy thumbs up. If you're not a member of my worm family, click that subscribe button. And if you wanna know what I'm doing when I'm doing it, ring that bell icon. Okay, we have my worm chow only bin. Kind of get the bubble wrap off of here. And let's see what we've got. Now, last time that we were in here, we went ahead and removed five big handfuls and gave it to Blue. I was thinking maybe things were not bulking up because there were too many worms in here. Because as we all know, they kind of fit their, you know, environment and I thought well maybe the reason why they're not getting bigger is there's too many of them so we moved some of them out and then we fed them up a lot um, I'll put a picture below because we put the worm chow in and then we put a couple of safety piles on the side just in case because I knew I was gonna be gone for a couple of weeks so let's take a look at these guys and see what they're doing so they got a lot of new bedding last time and quite a bit of worm chow now this is my Uncle Jim's mix. This is my Red Wigglers, my Blue Worms, and my European Night Crawlers. So of course, certain worms aren't going to get huge and bulky. And we have not seen them get huge and bulky here. And I thought maybe it wasn't necessarily the quality of the worm chow. Uh, maybe it was the fact that there was too many worms in here. Just didn't have room to spread out. So I really don't know how many worms are in here. But, uh, so put in the comments below, how many worms, just with me looking through this, what do you think is in this bin? Is this a good amount of worms, or should I have thinned them out more? So, yeah, the paper bedding does get sticky from time to time. That's why I put coconut coir and things, so that it keeps it all nice and loose. You can also use peat moss if you don't have coconut coir, or if you don't like the idea of using it. But as far as I can tell, there's probably three quarters of a pound of worms in here, maybe um, a little more. So put in the comments below, do you think this is a good amount of worms to try and bulk them up and get them bigger, or should I thin it out more? So I also wanted to mention I ran out of the cornmeal and just happened to have a box of the alfalfa meal. So I substituted that in my current um, recipe. I'm going to give them a little bit more water here. Um, I'm still kind of trying to recover the bins from when I was gone on vacation and accidentally gone for an extra more than a week. So I'm still trying to get the moisture level back normal um, to a more moist level. Right, so let's see. The, uh, the worm chow that I'm using currently is equal parts wheat flour. Alpha, alfalfa meal, ground oatmeal, and bird seed. So these guys haven't been fed in a good long time, so I'm going to give them a really good feeding all the way across. Here's a little baby worm hitching a ride. And uh, so we'll see what they do now that I've substituted the alfalfa meal. A lot of people who do it professionally have commented on my videos previously and said, hey, we use this and it really works well. Maybe you should try that. So for those of you who put that in the comments previously, here we are. We're giving it a try. I'm taking your um, suggestions. 
If you like my experimental videos, I have a whole playlist of things that I have tried to try and do better job at uh, being a worm farmer and also maybe dispelling some myths. And I have a whole playlist I can put right over there. Now YouTube has an idea of what you'd like to watch next, and they think you should watch this video right here. Alright guys, thanks for hanging out with me and my worms, and everybody, have a good day.